Maybe I can help you. I am Boba Fett. Boba Fett is potentially one of the most iconic characters ever seen on screen. With his intimidating presence and striking look, when Boba Fett made his first theatrical appearance in The Empire Strikes Back in 1980, he immediately became a fan favourite with audiences, who were desperate to know more about this mysterious character. But now, 40 something years later, with the book of Boba Fett releasing this month on Disney+, Plus, the question is, can a character like Boba Fett actually sustain his own TV show? I'm Dylan, welcome to Yubnub. First, a bit of history. You see, Boba Fett wasn't always the biggest badass in the galaxy. He was designed by concept artist Joe Johnson as a super commando, aka the kind of evolution of the stormtrooper. But when budget cuts happened, George Lucas decided to keep the design and create a new character, a bounty hunter. So take the incredible concept art and design of Joe Johnson, the sound work of Ben Burtt, and a great performance by Jeremy Bullock, and you end up with the coolest and most ineffective bounty hunter in the galaxy. Because let's be honest, he looks sick, but in the original films, Boba Fett's kind of a bitch. <laughs> However, in the years following the original trilogy, Boba Fett would well and truly get his non-bitch moment, becoming a key part of the expanded universe of books, comics, and games. During those adventures, Boba would refound the Bounty Hunters Guild, take on bounties, hunt Han Solo, team up with everyone's favourite space dad, Darth Vader, and get this, escape from the Salak pit twice. How do you... Anyway, legends. But as the prequels came around, George Lucas started to experiment with the character once again. You know, the Clone Wars suddenly, they weren't just this thing that Obi-Wan talked about, they were an actual thing. There were clones, and apparently Boba Fett was one of them. A pure, unadulterated clone of his father, bounty hunter Jango Fett, who apparently definitely wasn't a Mandalorian. Suddenly, Boba Fett was a person. He wasn't just a man in a mask anymore, now he was a boy in a blue shirt thing. And in a way, he's also Jango because there are clones, so they're the exact same person. So it's his dad, but it's also kind of him. So like when you look at the dad, you look at him, it, it, it got confusing. Anyway, the point is, Boba Fett was finally a three-dimensional character. Kind of. You see, in the world of screenwriting and storytelling, characters are often put into a bunch of different categories. There's the protagonists. They're often the main characters, the heroes, the Luke Skywalkers, the Harry Potters, or any kind of main character in a film. By being a protagonist, they are the character that we follow and root for. They're the hero. They have goals, desires, wants. They're going after something, and we love to watch them as they try to achieve that thing. Then there's the antagonists. They're the people who get in the way of our characters getting what they want. But it also goes one step further because some characters are central and some are supporting. Meaning a supporting character is only required to support the story that we're enjoying. They don't have to carry it. So even though young Boba Fett and Jango Fett have far more screen time and lines than Boba does in the original trilogy, that doesn't actually make them more of a character. At the end of the day, Boba and Jango only exist to serve as simple supporting antagonists. In fact, if you look at Boba's journey over the original trilogy and Jango's in Attack of the Clones, they're very much the same. Their entire purpose is to get in our lead character's way and stop them from getting what they want. And they only do that until our lead characters like Luke or Obi-Wan have got to a point where they can actually overcome that obstacle and their actual importance to the plot has disappeared. We don't really need to know much about them or even hear from them. They don't need lines. And to answer the most important question in creating a character, what do they want? We don't actually need to know because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. In the case of Boba and Jango Fett, the answer is simple. He's just a dude in some armor, getting paid to do a job, and that's it. That's what he cares about. Like sure, in the case of Jango, like he obviously seems to care about his son slash mini me or, or whatever, at least a bit, like not enough to leave him with a you know, stable guardian whilst attacking a Jedi, but otherwise, we don't know and we don't really care. However, as we fast forward to today in December 2021, with a new Boba Fett show just around the corner, suddenly our needs of a character like Boba Fett have changed. If he's the main character, he's no longer a supporting character, he's the freaking lead. So suddenly what he says, where he goes and what he wants really matters. I can't help but ask, but what does Boba Fett want now? And is it enough of an answer to sustain a whole TV series without ruining a character that people have loved since 1980? But before we get to that question, let's get animated. 
And what I mean by that is I think it would be foolish to raise the question of whether Boba Fett can actually be a satisfying character without going back to one of the best arcs of his story, which is that from the Star Wars animated TV series, The Clone Wars. In the season two episodes, Death Trap, R2 Come Home and Lethal Trackdown, we meet Boba Fett for the first time since Attack of the Clones as he attempts to infiltrate the Republic Navy, all for the purpose of finding and tracking down Mace Windu so he can kill it because, you know, noise. The Clone Wars is a fantastic series, and if you haven't checked it out, you, you should do so. And this is just one example why, because as it does in plenty of episodes, it flips the story. Suddenly, it takes characters that we're used to seeing as protagonists, like Anakin Skywalker, Mace Windu, and flips it and makes Boba the hero of his own story. Suddenly, Boba Fett is actually more than meets the eye. He's actually got multiple choices in front of him, and this little 12 is trying to work out, like, what's he going to do? Which brings us to the key question of character development. What does a character want? You see, every three-dimensional character has something they want, but it goes deeper than that. They have needs, they have goals, they have flaws, they have abilities, they have skills, they have wounds from their past. And all of these things work together to create a great character. Because here's the thing, Characters aren't always aware of what they want or need, or what they want might be very different to what they need. Suddenly, all these things work against each other to create the beautiful essence of storytelling, which is conflict. And I'm not talking about like Middle Eastern conflict, I'm talking about like story conflict. You see, conflict is what truly makes characters and stories interesting. If everyone got along and got along with themselves, stories would be boring. See, that's why Boba Fett in this arc works, because for the first time, he has a legitimate goal and must make sacrifices and decisions to achieve that. Boba's lonely, he's lost his dad and he wants revenge. But in the story, in the lives of other young clones, he finds something he didn't realize he was missing, family. You know, he lost his dad. But on the other hand is another path, and that's the path of revenge freedom from guilt, freedom from pain, to kill Mace Windu and establish himself as the biggest bounty hunter in the galaxy. So which does Boba choose? Does he choose family and connection or revenge? This is conflict. And that's what makes the character of Boba Fett work. Not because he's got more screen time or we can see his face, not just a helmet, but because he has legitimate decisions, pain and choices to make. And this is what makes him a character. But to be honest, this is a lesson that I can't help but fear that Dave Filoni and Lucasfilm have forgotten. Because when I look at Boba Fett today, as we see him in The Mandalorian, I can't help but feel like he's experiencing an identity crisis. Now, firstly, don't get me wrong. When Boba Fett rocked up in The Mandalorian, I was excited as anybody. You know, he's in there just flipping, nailing the seismic charges. To hear Slave One again, well, sorry, Boba Fett's starship again. Even just seeing Tamura Morrison's face as Boba Fett, like, don't get me wrong, it did something to me. But as his character was reintroduced and I watched along, I couldn't help but notice that Boba's character had changed. This isn't a spy stream. You see, gone was the mysterious Boba Fett of the original trilogy or the, you know, dysfunctional youth of the Clone Wars. And in its place was a Boba Fett, like, I couldn't really understand. I mean, what does he want now? What What's this guy about? I mean, he rocks up in season two like a badass, but then is immediately just like, oh, hey guys, uh, yeah, I'm definitely a Mandalorian now, and oh, I want my armor back, otherwise I'm gonna kill the little green kid. Until like two seconds later when he's like, oh, that's really sad that they took your green kid. I'm gonna help you track him down and achieve your goal of, you know, reuniting him with the order of people that murdered his father. Like, what? It just doesn't make sense. And then for the rest of the series, it's like, he's just kind of ubers Mando around the galaxy a little bit until all of a sudden they're like, oh, hey, I can help you with anything you require unless like Luke Skywalker's gonna rock up, then I'm gonna have to leave because the script writers haven't really thought this through. See, it doesn't make sense. Suddenly, Boba Fett has gone from being this mysterious gunslinger who hangs out with Sith Lords and like only cares about money to being Mr. Nice Guy for some reason. What we end up with is a character who is completely different to who he was in the original trilogy, the prequels, and the Clone Wars, which isn't inherently wrong, but it is if it's poorly executed. 
See, here's the thing, all characters need to grow and change. That's what makes them characters. Like take Luke Skywalker, over the course of the original trilogy and sequels, he changes a lot and that's important. Characters should change. But as an audience, we need to know why. Why is Boba Fett suddenly Mr. Nice Guy? Why is he suddenly interested in having a criminal organization or doing whatever the heck he's doing in this new series? It doesn't really matter, but we, we need to understand and believe that it matters to him. Honestly, it feels like instead of a Sarlacc pit, Boba actually spent six months at the Tony Robbins seminar and came out being told, you can do anything, achieve your dreams. Okay, I'm gonna run a criminal organization. So the question is, who really is Boba Fett? And can the book of Boba Fett answer that question? To do so, it needs to show us what Boba Fett truly wants and what he needs. And the two aren't necessarily the same. We know his skills, but show us his flaws. Reveal his wounds and show us how his life of crime might stop him from finding the resolution he needs. That's true conflict. And that's what the character in the series will need to succeed. It's not just about big action sequences or mad crossovers because Ahsoka turned up. It has to go further than that. Is Boba Fett a broken, vengeful man who lost his dad? Or is he a mysterious bounty hunter that doesn't care about anybody? Or is he Mr. Nice Guy that spends his time helping other people who are definitely Mandalorians rescue green toddlers? Or is he a crime lord committing to building an empire on respect for some reason? I have no idea, but I hope Lucasfilm does. And if they can't figure it out, maybe this is evidence that some of these amazing, iconic supporting characters were never designed to be lead characters in the first place. What do you think? What are your hopes and fears for the book of Boba Fett? Are you excited about it? Are you terrified they're gonna ruin your childhood favorite character? How do you wanna see the character of Boba Fett grow? I'd love to hear from you, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit like and subscribe and stay tuned for more Yub Nub in the future.